Carefully, very slowly, put it straight down the brick. Make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end of the video, and you can see us melting down and casting ingots with the scrap copper in the shop. Okay, so I am at this HTP high efficiency boiler, and for heating, we have two systems set up like this carrier air handler, steam humidifier nice air filters, and a hydronic coil. And our issue is upstairs, we never stop getting heat um, unless she turns off the humidifier. And that's because the humidifier runs the fan when it needs to. And this zone valve is getting stuck in the open position. You can see I pulled off our lead to it, so it should be close and Take a look in there, it's not, it's fully open. So hopefully the actual valve isn't stuck and it's just the head, so we can replace that easily. Okay, so I pulled off the old head and it's the actual motor itself that's getting stuck, not the, uh, the valve. See how slow it's moving and then it stops right there. So it stays open even though the, uh, there's clearly no power being applied to it. <clears throat> so I just took off those the screw over here, screw over here, pop that one off, and we can pop this one on in its place. Okay, so here's our new valve in place. You can see that lever hitting that end switch. And when there's no call, doesn't close because this is powered by the AC circuit. But if I disconnect um, our call here, which I'm gonna have to do with a uh, pair of needle nose, it'll close. And there we go. It disengages when there's no call. If I connect it back together, you can see we close. And we make end switch. Okay, so I am headed off now to my next call, which is a rooftop unit maintenance in Queens. It just generally says Queens, but I think it's right outside of Valley Stream. Um, for like a Texas roadhouse or something. I don't know. We'll see when I get there. Oh no, that was a simple one. And then turn left. I'll after that, the there is nothing on my schedule till later in the day, so I'm not sure what will happen. I'll probably get put on and uh, I'll have something to do, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so there's the van up on the roof. This is going to be our unit. Two oh eight, five ton. No condensate trap. Unit drain line has built-in drain trap. Do not use additional drain trap externally. Nice. So we don't even need one. And there's our venting, our electrical. Coil. It's got some discoloration on it on the inside. Why? I'm not exactly sure. Motor looks rough, but uh, <laughs> get it opened up and take a look inside. Okay, so we got a new inducer motor here tell because it's not rusted like everything else is. Our uh, burner cover for our burner tray is disintegrating. Uh, looks like our heat exchanger is possibly disintegrating. Um, burners are rusty. Those can always be cleaned. But uh, we got a lot of rust and disintegration around this whole uh, assembly. So 
we're going to be replacing these uh, rusted out components. That's it's a must. We're dealing with combustion in this chamber. Everything here is where it is for a reason. And it's in the condition that it's currently in for a reason. So, lack of maintenance. I'm going to pull open the uh, cover for our, our heat exchanger. Looks like, I think on this unit, I'll be able to see the heat exchanger up here and the blower up here. So, I'll pop this off and see what we see. This is what we got here. A piece of sheet metal cut clean off because I didn't want to take this apart the right way. And tape on our heat exchanger. So. I found this on the web. No, I don't care what you found on the web. Let's get uh, some of this pulled off of here. No uh, need for tape on a heat exchanger, ever. Probably got holes or cracks here. And if that's the case, I'm not putting tape back on. The unit can't be run. So. Oh, gotta love it when they load it up with tape like this. Yep, I feel the hole back here with my finger already. Let's see. You see it? Yeah, you can kind of see it. I wonder if we got a... Got more. Don't want to cut myself, but... Oh yeah, we got a big, big hole here. I don't know if the camera can see it or not, but yeah, we need a new heat exchanger. Went from a heating maintenance to uh, can't let your heat run because you can kill somebody. This is uh, absolute Hackery. Okay, so here's the unit again, just butchered. But uh, I did just give the uh, customer a call in New York. Technically, we can't shut down the appliance. Uh, he said he will absolutely not allow us to shut it down. He needs to have the heat. So um, I'm gonna have to tape up the heat exchanger make it as safe as I can and uh, leave it running. With the condition of the unit, I recommend replacement and that's what I told him, but we'll, we'll gladly do repairs, it's up to him, and for now he wants to go ahead with the repairs. So I called our MCN, our Bream distributor, to uh, get together a part pricing and availability on uh, everything here. But, um, yeah, the unit's in rough shape, but it is what it is. Peter said that that's why he didn't sign him up for a maintenance agreement on the phone. He, he said he sensed that something was going to be wrong with this unit, so props to Peter. But uh, I'm going to get everything buttoned up and, yeah, I'll have to move on. So I finished up there. I'm headed now to Capital Tire. I had my van serviced and the guy said I need two new tires and that's going to be back tires because he took the tires from the back and put them in the front when he rotated them. So the two back tires need to be replaced and then my inspection is due. So I'm due inspection too. I was surprised that they were available like right now. I called to see if they would have the tires in stock and they were like, yeah, come in now. So doing that and then uh, I have a call in Lynbrook which is where the tire place is 
and I'm not sure if I'll be able to go there early or not when I get out, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm on my way now to a Burnham IN5 maintenance and low water cutoff issue. He says that when you move the wire, the low water cutoff will go on or off. Um, it's 11 or 12 years old, so it's probably just time for a new low water cutoff, but yeah, we'll see what happens. Okay, so here's the low water cutoff. And if I touch these, our light goes out. You can't tell because of the... So... Why is that happening? Is it that this is loose? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The connection in there for the red wire. Pink wire is like uh, super stretched out more than the rest. So let me see if I could close that in a little bit. Yeah, so I was able to get my tiny little screwdriver in there on my Leatherman and actually make those pins tighter. Now, when I touch it, nothing is happening. So. They do recommend replacement of the low water cutoff at 15 years of age. So I'm going to discuss it with the homeowner because I would still be more comfortable with replacement. Um, but I'm going to pull the probe off and inspect it as part of the maintenance and uh, take it from there. So I got to drain the boiler out. I've got my big bucket here. Hose. And we'll let it drain out. And while I had power off, I also blew out our pressure, our pigtail. But here is the uh, the probe, which looks fine. Um, it's got that little metal piece on there that I guess actually senses the water level. But the probe looks okay, so I'm going to see what he wants to do about uh, the low water cutoff. So I spoke with him about the low water cutoff. We're going to leave that for now uh, as is. We're going to see if we can order that wire which goes into our junction box. For the burners, I just pulled and cleaned them. I also cleaned off the um, flame sensing rod for the spark ignition and combustion chamber, and I put it all back together. I'm just gonna take a clip of the inside of the combustion chamber so I know there's no rusting or anything. Okay, so this has been running for a while. It is making steam now. See our two giant steam mains. But did a combustion and draft analysis test. Results are good. You could pause it if you want to see them. And I filled out the invoice message uh, detailed. That way the customer knows exactly what was done. He's super into this system. He's always like monitoring it, so. Now we can wrap it up and get paid. Okay, so I finished up with that. I'm gonna see uh, if I can melt some metal at the shop because I wanted to do it. And they've already done it a bunch of times without me. Um, Cause yeah, there's nothing on my schedule. Uh, that RTU, I ordered all the components that we're gonna need to replace on that. Uh, pretty much just a full rebuild on the heating side. He paid a deposit. Um, and yeah, we'll see if anything else comes up. Oh, I just caught it, I think. All right, slowly. Put it straight down the brick. Okay, good.
magma. Should we spray that? <laughs> All right, you gonna scoop it? Oh, it was a full bar. We didn't, uh... That is a cool looking bar. Oh my god. Oh, my god. oh that would have made it a full bar. Did you get on video? No. Oh. Wow. Yeah, that's why that was a lot. Yeah, we're gonna die. Carbon monoxide poison. Really? How much? 40. 11. That much. Oh, you're gonna quench it? No, what is it? I think it's cool enough. What do you think? Yeah, try it. You want me to move that? Oh, yeah. That is a cool looking bar. Shut up. It almost looks like it's see through. Alright, watch this. Get this on video. I got it. Yeah, the bar is still hot too. How hot is the water? Under 10? Huh. Can we take it out? Take it out if you want. I don't think I would take it out yet. Yeah. Ways. Four four pounds. Four pounds. Is there brass in there? Yeah. It stinks. It was like it was like wet dog. It was not wet dog, it's wet copper. That was pretty cool. Um, I've never melted metal, at least not that way. I've melted it with a uh, metal cutting uh, torch. But uh, yeah, hopefully I don't get metal fume fever. But that's gonna be it for today. I'm headed home. Um, my first real video since having COVID, so hopefully you enjoy watching. Like the video if you liked it. Comment any advice or criticisms or feedback and subscribe. Thanks for watching.